In this video, I'll be doing a review of Zorin OS 8 Ultimate. And the party piece of Zorin is that they've provided a look changer, so you can easily switch between six different desktop styles. So you've got the choice of Windows 7, Windows XP, Windows 2000, Ubuntu Unity, Mac OS X, and GNOME 2. They've also provided a large selection of applications, but that does mean that the ISO file is particularly large. It's uh, 4 gig to download. Now I did have a problem with this ISO file, that it, the MD5 hash sum doesn't match their hash sum. And I've tried a couple of times and I ended up with the same file twice. Does that mean that their hash sum is incorrect, or does it mean that mine's still corrupted? Now I do have an unusual behaviour with this system, that it does occasionally glitch on the AWN bar. Or was that the Avant Window Navigator? I'm not quite sure what its acronym stood for. But yes, uh, it's my unusual behaviour with the theming, so it could be attributed to that, but it may not be. I don't know. I can't keep trying to download it. It's particularly large, and if I waited any longer, I'd just be pushing this review further and further back. Now, one other problem with this release is that you do have to pay for it. The cost is 10 euros. Could donate a bit more, but yes, it's cost of 10 euros. Now, the support cycles imposed by Unity means that this distro is only supported for nine months. It doesn't mean it could be considered to be quite a high price. Now, I did email the developer about this and said, are you going to offer free upgrades for the interim releases of Zorin? Unfortunately, I've not had a response though, so I've just had to press on with this review. Well, again, I'll be pushing it further and further back and never getting this review done. If they do reply to me, then yeah, I'll put a comment in this video and let you know what their result is. But you do have the option of going for the long-term support release of Zorin OS 6, which is supported for five years. So you don't have to pay for something that's only going to last for nine months. You do get a choice in the matter. Let's take more of a look at this distro. So starting here on the Windows 7 desktop, you can see it pretty much does look like Windows 7 with the icons on the desktop and the application menu in the bottom left hand side which you can either navigate through the menus or type in something to search through so you saw me messing around with the theme earlier so I can put it back to a light theme and you can see when you change themes around on the screen you have little animations along the bottom so that's quite nice you can mess around with the theme on the AWN bar so you can change its size and orientation it's not quite as convenient as it is in Windows, where you just drag the bar around. Oh look, there's a little mistake there on the theming. It's kind of dropped down out of the bar. Let's put that back to the bottom. You can change the style. Ugh. Yeah, it's not working well, that, is it? So yeah, a few different styles you can have. And you can change themes as well. So yeah, lots of choice here. But to go back to Zorin, then yep, you can just select those. And oh, I meant to go for Zorin Lite, actually, didn't I? Let's switch across to the Unity style. Now this is Unity-like, not actual Ubuntu Unity. You can see the launcher we have here is not Unity. It seems just as responsive. But one thing you can't do is switch between different genres of applications. All you've got are the pages. So yeah, not quite as good as the actual Unity launcher. Well, that was an intriguing little tool. Zorin World Community Grid. Contribute unused community resources for developing cures for cancer, HIV and AIDS, and help other projects. Okay. Using the look changer again, I'm going to go across to the Windows 2000 theme. And you can see we have the old-fashioned application menu, which did have the option of getting in Windows XP. Do you know, I did used to like this style of start menu, until I started using Unity, where you can just search for the applications by typing, so it's a hell of a lot quicker than going through these menus. But at least you do have something sort of like that in Windows 7, where you can sort of find the application as you type. Anyway, I opted for this just to take a look through the applications that we get, because it is a huge amount. So there's quite a lot of games pre-installed on this, so you actually got quite a few two-dimensional and three-dimensional games. Super Tux Kart, nice little 3D racer. Zonatic 3D shoot 'em up, it's quite a nice one at that. And you also got Steam for installing a variety of pay for applications. 
On the graphics, well, they've got Inkscape and GIMP, as well as quite a few other applications. Internet, the choice of browser is Google Chrome. And as you may have seen earlier, we do have Flash Player pre-installed. We've also got Skype, and we've got Thunderbird for the email client. Office, we've got the full suite of LibreOffice. Sound and video, we've got Amrock and music for the sound players. And we've got VLC and Totem for the video players. You also got a video editor with OpenShot and Caden Live. Under system tools, there are a variety of settings you can change here. So I want to check out the Compiz config, because Compiz is the one that allows you to do the rotational desktop cube. So that's the desktop switcher, so you've got four different desktops. <laughs> it does look great. And they've provided the additional Compiz effects as well, so there's quite a lot you can do here. Some of the animations are already included, things like on the opening and closing the applications and minimizing and switching around. So yeah, all those are animated there. It means you can leave that alone and go with what there is, but uh, you've also got the options to change things around as well, should you so please. I've got a video on my channel about uh, some of the compass settings I use within Ubuntu. So I could just enable wobbly windows, for instance, and we now have wobbly windows. <laughs> Very nice, very nice. Oh, whilst I'm moving this window around, you can see we've got the aero snap type effects. Ah, it's not gone back down to windowed size. Anyway, let's get rid of that. Continue along under system tools. Tweak tool. I started looking at this earlier, but uh, this is a bit intriguing. Oh, yeah, you don't want to change those necessarily. Home icon visible on desktop? Nope. Ah, excellent. Trash icon? No. Mounted volumes? No. And just leave Steam, which I can press delete and get rid of it. So now I have a clean desktop. Yeah, a few more settings you can change here on the fonts. Uh, the mouse. Highlight the current position of the point when control key is pressed. I've got one. Haha. <laughs> excellent. Those are some useful settings there that you can tweak. Okay, a few more here. I'm uh, just going to flick through them. That's a useful tool. Forgot to mention about the Zorin Browser Manager. A convenient browser installer here. Kind of like the things you would have seen in Windows. And the last thing I'm going to mention here is got Wine and Play on Linux, which will allow you to install Windows applications within Linux, because by default those won't necessarily work out the box. See if I can go through here quickly. So install the program. So you can go and look for the Windows program you'd like to install. So there's quite a lot of supports nowadays. It's been some time since I've used this application. Oh, Grand Theft Auto. Excellent. Now here's what I thought of Zorin OS 8 Ultimate. They got the look changer there that provides you with six different desktop styles. So you can stick with the style of operating system that you're used to. And it's also ideal for anyone who is new to Linux, because you've got the wide selection of applications pre-installed on there. You don't have to sort of think, oh, what do I actually want on my system, because it's all there for you. But on the downside, I did have this occasional random bug with a the desktop theme, or the, with the AWN bar. It wasn't too major, but it was there occasionally. But that could have been because maybe my ISO file was corrupted. I can't completely rule that out. And also you do have the possible high cost of 10 euros considering the short support time of nine months. But you do have the option of going for the long-term support release. But overall, I've given this distro 80%, which is slightly lower than it was before because I awarded Zorin OS 7, it was 85%. Thanks for watching, see you later.